I've been dabbling with the M1 Mac Mini since purchasing one back in January of 2021. It's now June, but it's not my main computer. I'm very much still using my Windows PC as my main computer, but I have been using it to do some YouTube projects and color grading and DaVinci Resolve with the Enhancer Pro plugin. I've been doing some photo editing, whatever, YouTube kind of stuff. But seeing as it's not my main computer, I didn't want to spend a ton of money on peripherals. And I also wanted to choose peripherals that would allow me to relatively easily and seamlessly switch back and forth between the baby Mac and my Windows PC. I just wanted to share with you the ones I've chosen in case you are in a similar situation or you just got the Mac mini and you want to know what to get, maybe this video will help you out. So we are focusing on your basic peripherals, keyboard, mouse, a, a word about monitors, but I don't have a specific monitor recommendation for you, although you're welcome to use these as well. <laughs> But I also wanted to let you know that none of this stuff was provided to me by any companies, no sponsorships, anything like that. I've purchased all this stuff with my own money. There are affiliate links in the description, so if you are interested in checking any of these out and you do purchase something, it will help me out, but you know that you know how it works for YouTube. One last thing before we get started, a word about Bluetooth. I haven't experienced any major Bluetooth issues or connectivity issues with my M1 Mac Mini, even from the start, but now especially that I'm running pretty much everything Bluetooth all wirelessly, keyboard, mouse, speakers, occasionally headphones, it's been working pretty well. Let me know in the comments if you do have Bluetooth issues and how you've chosen to overcome them. Let me know what kind of peripherals you've chosen to go with your Mac mini and any recommendations you might have for people. Let's start with the keyboard. I went with the Keychron K2 V2 and a couple reasons that I chose this. One, it's Bluetooth and you can pair it with multiple devices. Number two is that it is a mechanical keyboard, which I personally prefer. Another reason I chose this is that for a mechanical keyboard, especially when it's Bluetooth, is that it's pretty affordable. These start at $70 and then they have a couple of options. So the one that I have here is 90 bucks because it's got the RGB backlit keys and it also has this aluminum frame around it. But if you just wanted to get the plastic build with the single color backlight, you can get it for 70 bucks. I don't know exactly what form factor this is. Um, clearly it's not a full size keyboard, but they do have the full size version and they also have a 10 keyless version. You can swap back and forth between Windows layout and Mac OS layout. And it also comes with keycaps for both. You could just sw switch the keycaps. So I've really enjoyed this keyboard. It works really well for Windows. It, I was kind of sketch about switching over to, to a Bluetooth keyboard because I do play a lot of games, like nothing serious, but just for enjoyment. But I haven't noticed any lag or input latency. You know, I'm not 13 years old anymore, so maybe if you're younger and your reflexes are like that, <laughs> maybe you can tell a difference, but I certainly cannot. And it switches back and forth between Windows, and P Windows PC and Mac super easy and really quickly. It's just a function one for Mac and function two for Windows, and it pops right up between both of them. The one issue that I've had with it that I don't, that's kind of goofy, there is a little battery indicator light here on the side that you will never see. Uh, it's not very bright and it's also just in a place that you won't see it on a day-to-day -day basis. The keyboard should last about 70 hours on a charge, but eventually it's just gonna die. You just plug it in, uh, it's got a USB-C cable to USB-A and it will start charging immediately, but it doesn't always come back on immediately. I find that it's a little bit finicky to get it to actually come back on once the battery has died. On the plus side, again, the battery life is really long on a single charge, so this isn't like a daily or even every other day occurrence. It's like a, a weekly or more. I don't know, depending on how often you're using it, of course, but it is an annoying issue. Let's move on to the mouse. And this is one that I just picked up the other day. I had been using a cheesy wired Logitech mouse that I bought for my stepson and he quickly wanted a new one. And so I was using it and I can understand why he wanted a new one because it sucked. But anyway, I just picked up the Logitech MX Master 2S. And the reason I went with this one is because I didn't want to spend $100 on another mouse. You'll see a lot of people in videos like this recommending the MX Master 3, but again, that's $100. I was able to get this one brand new for 60 bucks, which is still a little bit expensive, but of course, $40 is nothing to sneeze at. In terms of the differences between the two, there are some ergonomic improvements on the 3 versus the 2S, especially where like the placement of these forward and back buttons here. I think they're underneath the scroll wheel now. This one actually does have a faster and smoother polling rate over the three, so performance wise, it's actually a little bit better, but for productivity and sort of editing tasks, you probably would never notice the difference. But if you do game on it, 
maybe there's a slight advantage to the 2S over the 3 anyway. Again, I've just had this one for a few days now and I, I like it overall so far. It's very similar in terms of ergonomics to my all-time favorite mouse, which is the Razer Death Adder Elite. The way you grip them, the way your hand lays on both is very similar. It's of course heavier than a wired mouse because it's got a battery in it. But again, for productivity and editing type things, it's perfectly fine. I do like this side scroll wheel. It'll work pretty much natively in your editing apps in order allowing you to just scroll through the timeline by just scrolling that wheel. And there also is a companion app and it gives you, it basically unlocks all the functionality of the mouse and you can program the mouse to work with specific programs. So that's what I do with DaVinci Resolve. I program some key presses to align with how I like to edit and I could do the same thing with my Razer app on my Windows PC. So these pretty much match up. So if I'm editing on Windows and editing on Mac, it works the same for me. So that's pretty cool. If you did want to use one mouse and you do have two computers that you're switching back and forth, you can pair up, up to three devices with this and just switch tile between them with this little button on the bottom. So you've got one, two, and three, and it works pretty much flawlessly. So I just want to do a quick word about monitors. I don't have a specific monitor recommendation for you because these I've been using for years. I've had these for, I don't know, six or seven years now and they work perfectly fine and I have no intentions of upgrading. But I would say if you do have this situation where you're switching between different computers, just make sure the monitor you buy has enough input. So this one, this Asus ROG gaming monitor has a DisplayPort in and an HDMI in. So the Mac um, is hooked up via HDMI, the Windows PC over DisplayPort and then I can just you know, go to input select and go over to the different computer. This one is a 4K Dell display and this one's pretty old too. I don't even think they sell this one anymore, but of course there's an updated one, but it has DisplayPort, HDMI and mini DisplayPort. So I have the PC going into the full size DisplayPort and the Mac mini using a USB-C to mini DisplayPort. That's how I'm plugging that into the monitor. And then I even have a PlayStation over here going into HDMI. As far as monitors are concerned, that would be a topic for a whole other video. It would just come down to personal preference for how big it, you want it to be, the resolution, color accuracy, all those kinds of things. Let's move on to audio, because as you know, the Mac mini does have a built-in speaker, but that's about all we can say about it. So I'm using these iLoud micro monitors, and they're a little bit pricey. They're, I think, about $300 can't remember exactly, but there'll be a link in the description if you want to check them out. But they're pretty damn good for the size. They look like pretty much your generic run-of-the-mill desktop speakers, but they're really loud. They've got pretty decent bass response for the size of them as well. You can connect to them via Bluetooth, which is what I have with the Mac Mini, and then I have it connected to my Windows PC over a wired connection, so it can no, have no issues going back and forth between the, the two of them. They also have some EQ settings on the back so you can set them up to sound how you want. So they're more fully featured than your kind of bargain basement desktop PC or computer speakers. I like to have something that's a little bit more professional, quote unquote, because I do video editing and I do edit audio. So just something that's gonna give me a little bit more information about how things actually sound. Of course, you could buy something for less than $100 to pair over Bluetooth with your Mac mini or you could get those Apple home, home balls. As for headphones, I do have these. Um, I don't remember exactly what these are called. They are Sony, oh, here we go. These are the WH-1000X M3s, and there are M4s out now. Well, I've had these for a while anyway, but Sony, I think, still sells these new, and they're quite a bit cheaper than the M4s, and they're, of course, they're cheaper than those Apple uh, aluminum, whatever they're called. <laughs> And they sound decent. They're not the best sounding headphones, probably not the most accurate. They do have a lot of bass, but they do pair over Bluetooth. I don't use these all the time. I'm not a huge, I don't like listening to headphones unless I'm doing like critical like audio editing, in which case I'll just use a wired connection with actual reference studio headphones, as opposed to something that's more uh, for listening to music. So that's it for the basic peripherals. That's everything that you need to get up and running with your new Mac mini. I want to touch on one other thing or two other things real quick. And that is a USB dock or USB hub or whatever you want to call it. And I went with this one, it's called Hagibus. I don't know if that's the name of the dock itself or if that's the name of the company, but there's like a bunch of ones that look just like this. 
And I've done a full video overview slash review on this, so I'm not gonna take too much time about it, but just for the sake of this video, I went with this one because it doubles as an uh, SSD or a two and a half inch drive enclosure. So I already had a one terabyte SanDisk SSD that I just pulled out of my Windows PC and put it in here. So that supplements the atrocious 256 gig <laughs> internal storage on my base model M1 Mac mini. Of course, you also get two USB 2s on the front and two USB 3s, as well as a micro and full size SD card reader. So it just really helps out. So having the ability to plug in a couple more things on an as needed basis. So like when the keyboard dies and the mouse dies, I can just plug them right into the front here not have to worry about fiddling with the back of the Mac or unplugging things. So that works really well. And then of course, having that internal drive really helps with you know, having a reasonable amount of storage without paying the Apple premium for storage, which is insanity. Now there is an issue with this that you probably may have run across if you've been researching these at all. If the Mac goes to sleep, it will disconnect that drive oftentimes. So what I do is just disable the auto sleep function on the Mac and just leave it on. And then I never have that problem. The Mac just sips power, even when it's on, it's probably utilizing less power than other things in your house that are off. It's pretty insane. So I don't feel bad about not letting it go to sleep, but I just turn it off when I'm not using it and then boot it up when I am. And that doesn't cause any disconnect issues with that drive. I also do use an external SSD, which I'm actually recording onto right now, so I can't show it to you, but I'll have some B-roll. And it's just an older SanDisk 500 gigabyte external SSD. And I think there is a newer version that should be a little bit faster. For some reason, I don't get full speeds out of any of the ports on the Mac. So don't think you have to overpay for the fastest drive on the market, because chances are you're not gonna get full speeds out of it anyway. At least that's been my experience. And I'm talking about going right into the Mac, not through this dock. And that's just another thing that I can use to obviously edit the files right off this camera, but if I'm not using it for that purpose, then it just gives me like another scratch disk when I'm editing that just suits my workflow. Well, that's it. Those are all the peripherals and accessories that I've chosen to pair with the little Mac Mini that can. I hope you got something out of that or you at least enjoyed the video for some reason. Feel free to leave some comments below if you have chosen different peripherals that you want to recommend to people. I'd love to see it and hear what you guys are doing and using if you have the Macimus. I think that's it. Appreciate you watching the video and we'll see you in another one.